stampers and thank you so much for joining me today for another stamp and sunday video this is laura buchler of inky fingers paper crafting your independent stampin up demonstrator in nanaimo bc today's video is by popular demand i posted a photo of these adorable little post-it note holders and calendar holders on my facebook page and i got several requests for a tutorial on how to make them i'm all too happy to share the instructions with you just like i say at the end of every video if there's something you want to learn just ask because i do take requests so this is a gift that i make quite often as it's such a great little package to throw in your purse you've got your notepad your calendar You've got your little pencil right here, all in one great little place. Now, I love giving these to my hostesses or my Stampin' Club members as a gift, and it makes a great stocking stuffer too. So I am using the beautiful Flower and Field Designer Series paper, which is a free level one reward during celebration. So this is a beautiful paper, and you can choose it free with your $60 purchase until February 28th. You will need a piece of designer series paper that measures eight and a half by six inches, and then two small pieces of cardstock, and these are three and three sixteenths by one inch. And I've scored each of these at half an inch, right in the center there. So with your DSP, you're going to score along the long side at one and three eighths from each edge. Then you're going to score along the short side at one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters, five and one eighths, and five and three eighths. So what we've got here over towards this side, we've got three score lines all in a row. And then down here, we've got two more score lines. I know it's very hard for you to see on this paper, but don't worry, I'll walk you through every step. So those first score lines we did along the long sides, you can go ahead and burnish those. And then we're actually gonna add adhesive right at the edges and fold those sides in. This is one of the things that makes the project very durable and also kind of more classy looking is because it's got those finished edges on each side. So with my paper, I've got the side over here that's got the three score lines close together. It's, it's not easy to see, but it's easy to feel when I run my finger along it. So I'm going to fold down the very first score line there. And then using the ruler on my grid paper, I'm going to mark that at one and three eighths and one and seven eighths. So I've got those two pencil marks there. It's tricky to see, but they are there. So I'm just going to lightly burnish the second score line, second out of three. And now if I hold this up, so you can see those two places where I've marked. I'm going to snip right on those lines. I've got the first score line here, second one here, third one is behind. I haven't done anything with it yet. And so I'm going to snip along those places that I marked from the first score line all the way to the third score line, okay? It seems complicated, I promise it's actually quite easy. The final step is I'm gonna burnish that third score line. So now I've got all of those score lines moving the way I want them to. And finally, I will take some tear and tape and I'm going to put it right under the third score line, just on the sides that have been folded in here, not along the center. And if you're picky like I am, what you wanna do is use a ruler to tear your tear and tape 
because then it leaves a really lovely straight edge. And you do want to use tear and tape for this because there's going to be some tension on, on this area. So you want something really, really strong. So I'm going to grab my bone folder, run it along the adhesive a couple of times to warm it up. And then I take the backing off. And I'm gonna fold that down. So I know it's very hard to see right now, but all the magic happens when you bring in your little golf pencil, which by the way, you can buy a box of these at Staples. And what you've done with that little snip is created a loop for your pencil. So I'm gonna hold that at a few different angles so that you can see. See the way the paper goes up and then right back down, that's where we stuck it back down to itself. And then it makes an L shape. And this part here where we snipped, we snipped between here and here. And that causes that loop to pop out. It's very hard to see until you actually slide the pencil into it. But there it is. Okay. So, very, very cool. Now these bits here, what we're gonna do is score them. I'm gonna put adhesive on both sides. Now I'm going to lay down this cardstock and put my DSP on top of it right along the score line. And that's creating another lovely finished edge for the project. We're gonna do the same thing up here. Now, don't forget, we've got two score lines down here that we haven't done anything with yet. So let's go ahead and burnish those. And now I'm gonna add my extra goodies. Post-it notes you can get at Staples or at the dollar store. And these calendars I actually get locally here in Nanaimo from a friend of mine uh, named Trisha. She's on Facebook under Trisha's Custom Treasures. And she does these lovely little calendars for me. I love them because first of all, they're Canadian. They have the Canadian holidays marked on them. She does them in three different sizes depending on what you need. And then best of all, she will customize the font based on your branding. So that is my custom Inky Fingers font that I like to use. And so she's done them for me and she ships all over Canada. So anybody in Canada watching this, if you want cute little calendars like this, look for Trisha's Custom Treasures on Facebook and she will help you out. So there we go, there's our calendar, our post-it note, and our pencil. Now all that we need to do is decorate this. Now when I first learned how to make this project, the video that I watched recommending recommended using magnets or Velcro to hold this notepad closed. And I tried both of these, but it didn't lay flat enough for me. Uh, it was just too much bulk around the closure, so I have figured out a different way to do this, which I'll show you today. First of all, I love using the A Little Note sentiment from Butterfly Gala to go on top of these. I'm going to stamp that with Cherry Cobbler ink. Now 
I'm using the Story Label Punch, but you could use pretty much any punched shape you want to create this closure. So when I attach this to my project, I'm going to use dimensionals or mini dimensionals, and I'm only going to put them along the sides and bottom. So I'll mark right here that this is the top of my shape. You can see it's that side up. And so I can put dimensionals at the sides and at the bottom and even in the center here, but I'm not going to put any along that top line. So once I've added the dimensionals and I've taken the backing off, I want to place it on my project so that the flap is touching the dimensionals on the sides. So I'm going to slide it like this until I feel the dimensionals bumping up against that flap. And then I go ahead and stick it down. And then that flap is going to be able to slide in and out because we haven't put a dimensional at the top. So that, that part is open for the flap to slide in. Now I'm going to add some little butterflies to decorate just for fun. Since I've already got my butterfly gala stamp set out, I might as well have some fun with it. I could use the stamps from Butterfly Gala to fill in this butterfly, but I'm going to use my new blending brush. Why not? And there's our finished project. Now here's the thing. This is a 3D item and so I can't send it out in the mail. I'm sorry about that but I do still want everyone to have a chance to win. So what I did is I made a matching card to go along with it. So please do share the video as usual and I'm going to choose two winners. The local winner will receive this little notepad and the out of town winner will receive this card. So please do share the video, leave a comment below to let me know that you've shared and maybe you'll be one of the lucky winners. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please drop me a comment below and let me know what you think. And if there's something specific that you'd like to learn about, just ask. As you can see, I do take requests. Remember that you can purchase all the products shown on my website, inkyfingers.ca, where you'll also find more project tutorials, current promotional details and catalogs, and the sign up for my monthly email newsletter. I'm not currently offering in-person classes, but you can visit my website to see all the different virtual events I'm offering, including creativity to go, mystery stamping, and bring your own project. All of these classes are fun, social, creative, and welcoming, and I hope to see you there soon. Find all of these details and so much more on my website. If you're watching this on YouTube, I want to let you know that I have a Facebook page called Inky Fingers Paper Crafting. I hope you'll join me there, participate in the weekly creative challenges, and maybe win a prize from me. If you do place an order, please use the current hostess code, which you can find on my website, because everyone who uses that code will get a free gift from me. And if you'd like to earn your own hostess rewards, all you need to do is place an order of over $200 or contact me and we'll start planning your very own online party. Drop me a line for more details. Have a great day everyone and happy stampin'. Bye!